Uh, welcome to our program which we do every second Sunday of the month and this is about challenges our youth is facing in 21st century and today our topic is brain drain a dilemma for Muslim world so what's wrong with that naturally there is movement of talent across the world but especially the Muslim world is being deprived of talent and dynamic people what is its effect on the young generation in in uh, which are which is being raised in West so today we have we are lucky to have professor Javed Iqbal uh, professor of surgery but above all he's uh, he doesn't just teach or uh, help patients he also inspires them he motivates them and that's why he is known all over the world about his motivational uh, talks. And uh, thank you, Javed, for uh, joining me. Thank you very much for having me in your program. You're welcome. So, Javed, you have seen the world uh, either as a visiting professor and before that as a student. And uh, you have interacted with Muslims all over the world. And now, living in Pakistan, uh, you have become a source of inspiration for so many people. Uh, Sometimes, uh, you know, people from India, they send me a video and say, oh, do you know this guy? <laughs> and say, oh, we are very much motivated. And Please don't tell them the truth, <laughs> <laughs> that you know me inside out. So, uh, this uh, topic is really affecting our young generation there. So what do you think, what are the reasons people are just leaving uh, these Muslim world? Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Nasser. Uh, well, uh, this problem is actually not single-faceted problem that we can just uh, get an answer like yes or no, an objective answer. It's, it's a very, very, the question is simple, but the answer is very complicated. And one very obvious and simple reason is that everyone in this world, he wants to grow and he wants to get best out of this world. And when he compares the Western world as to, to our own country, especially when you're talking about Muslim world, then when they compare in a worldly terms, they see that if you compare apple with apple, orange with orange, then in every sphere of the life, the Western world appears to be, appears to be better mm -hmm. than the world here in their own countries. You look at the social system, you look at the systems of governance, you look at the education system, you look in the terms of social security, uh, old age benefits, health care system. So all of these things and simple day-to-day -day amenities and facilities, they are not comparable most of the time. So obviously it is very lucrative and when a young person, especially someone who has got a talent, and he thinks that he can jump, he wants to jump. This is the one aspect and actually you can't blame them because everyone has got a right. And then there was a time when the world was you know, divided into compartments and everyone was actually living in his own cocoon. But for the last two decades, with the invent of and uh, discovery of uh, very swift methods of communication and transfer of knowledge you know, within seconds, and availability for knowledge on your palm, all of these things have uh, made people, especially young people, aware of what potentials they have and how they can express and exhibit those potentials in the Western world. So this is the one basic reason for which people want to just uh, just move in the Western world. But you know, the, the intelligent people naturally also know the other factors. Yes like what can, how it can harm them, how it can uproot them. So what happens to them? Yeah, right, you're right. Actually, this is why when I've said the other word comparative, I said apparently. This is why you know, I said it apparently, because obviously there is a hindsight of it. And you know better than me because you have been uh, in UK, you have been living in Saudi Arabia and also America for a long period of time. So actually you, you know it very well, but we often discuss those things. There are hindsights, but these hindsights are not visible to start with because of a very apparent reason that we human beings think ourselves as a physical entity alone. 
all those things which are very attractive to a person is because he thinks himself as a physical entity. Mm -hmm. So if we see the needs of the physical entity, then all those things fits in very beautifully inside. But actually we know that every human being has got other facets of life, other aspects of life. The second important aspect is the intellect. The third mm -hmm. aspect is emotionality. Mm -hmm. And above all, there is a fourth aspect which humans they don't share it with any other creature on this planet and that is the spirituality. Mm -hmm. so, uh, incidentally, unfortunately, our education system, our systems in our home, systems in our society, it just focuses on the physical growth of a person. So since the physical growth overpasses the other growth of the other aspects of the human personality or the individuality, as a result, he is just focusing on the physical element. But a person who has got a mature, grown-up intellect, emotionality, and above all, spirituality, then for him, probably all those incentives, they are just minor incentives, right? But see, if I want to drive a Ferrari, if I want to live a very lavish house, if I want to live in a place where climate is very conducive, I want to live in a place where a lot of chances of holidays, right? then obvious, these are all my physical needs. So the problem is, in our education and training system, if to start with, we teach our children, and not only just children, but masses, about the importance of intellect, emotionality, and spirituality, then I think this question will not arise. The hindsight of it is that when somebody moves there, then his roots are back, and we are very, very, even if we are not very practicing religious people, I'm not saying Muslims, because I'm including all which Everybody. have migrated from India, which have got migrated from some Jewish, uh, I mean, some Buddhist country or from a Sikh origin. We people, or almost everyone in human beings who have actually uh, some kind of a belief system to follow, their roots are very deep in that religion. Now for physical lucrative incentives, they shift to a foreign country, but when, we, when they, they go there, they feel a very, very dangerous threat, very, very serious threat to attachment to their roots. Now, for the first generation, they don't feel it because their children are young and they think that they are growing them in a very, very healthy environment. But once they become adult, and especially what I have seen, if they have got girls, then suddenly they have migrated there but their soul is very slow to travel and soul actually doesn't you know fly with the airline slow is very slowly creeping towards them and they are actually when they go there they it's only their physicality and to some extent their intellect which is there but they and partially the emotionality but the spirituality is still lagging behind and once the children grow and then they, it's just like that if we download an app, for example, an American app or many air apps are, is, uh, you know, Israeli apps, I came to know, or a British app, when we download it, we download it along with their civilization. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can see what are the objective things which we handle on the app, but the civilization which have been downloaded with it, that does not match with our insight. So that is what, this is the dilemma, when they go there, I have got very, my real sister, you, you know her, and she, she lives there in Dublin, she has got three sons, and now my daughter is married to one of them, and you, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I know, you know, whenever I visit USA, and then we travel all, you know, all around, and we have got friends there, and their children are grown, only those parents, Muslim parents, which have just decided that faith is their own problem, let those children handle it themselves, they are apparently comfortable because they have just adjusted. But those people who have got strong ties with their uh, religion, who have got strong ties with the relation, with their, their, uh, culture. Their, their culture and their, uh, their social norms and their family structure, I see most of them are in trouble. And they have got a kind of uh, turmoil inside and they don't know where their children are moving. Okay. However, there are people and uh, I don't feel shy to say it and with proudly that you are one of them, that you have uh, raised your children and my sister is also one of them, 
which has raised the children in that way that for your children there is no problem yeah. right so i think the take so sorry i'm just finishing mm -hmm. it the take home message is that if you have gone there and you are a parent which is there now if you would have been living in pakistan and were putting 10% in your parenting now you have to put 100% in your parenting yeah, right. if the parents put 100% in their parenting then raising their children in a western society actually does not pose any danger that's what i feel yeah. but you know brain drain you mentioned about the individual level what yes. happens what are the fears uh, why we cannot assimilate why we are slow and we have a, a cultural shock and we are uh, kind of apprehensive about our next generation but dilemma is also about the muslim world that their talent uh, i i was giving example to somebody that you know in an atom there's electrons that transfers the only those electrons transfer that are that has energy and everything in physics and chemistry is because of those electrons true so the same way the dynamic people who are problem solver who can uh, the complex society in pakistan and other muslim countries they can find some solution but they move and because of their struggle they don't have time to think back so that's uh, the collectively what is the loss for the muslim world is is huge i mean if some other country like america or other western power captures our natural resources that's not as big loss true as they capture our talent true so that's also a dilemma and in that dilemma the people who are living in the west my generation they have a guilt <laughs> now that guilt is a burden on the next generation true for them it's their country true for their country like my daughter her country is america that's right for them pakistan is another country so that burden uh, how yeah. to really well um, well again there are two aspects of uh, responding to this question one is that why there is a brain drain i remember i was reading on an article that when singapore became an independent country one of the things to start with their uh, leader did was that he announced that any singaporean who is anywhere in the world whatever pay he gets and in whatever currency he is paid we are willing to pay them same amount of pay and the same currency but you come back mm -hmm. now this is the type of leadership which is needed yeah many of the people you know when we when i was in america with you and we traveled at so many places almost there is no one except of you who didn't ask this question for me yaar is there any way that i can come back to pakistan is there any way there I, i these are all in our age group i mean mm -hmm. between 50s and yeah. 60 so the, as you have said that i i know i don't know whether we call it a guilt or whether we call it a correct understanding or whatever it is they want to come back so the first answer to the first part of your question in my opinion is that our leadership must take it very seriously mm -hmm. why people will be leaving it when they have got conducive environment present over here. here i remember long time ago i was selected in abu dhabi as as a consultant surgeon and when i landed back at karachi my father called late father said that there is a call from shifa international and uh, they said that if you want to have an interview just go there today and they will decide when i went there i had got choices of abu dhabi and uh, and shifa inter which is in pakistan hospital but my father said although you are getting one third of the pay which you are get, get, getting in um, abu dhabi but the environment is very comparable and conducive and it is our own country so we will not go to abu dhabi we will stay in islamabad right so if we create our leadership our our uh, elders our intelligentsia our academia our social thinkers they must understand this problem that we are continuously draining our brilliant people and as you have rightly said that people who are going there they are not ordinary people they are those people who have got a sufficient softness to pass through that that filter and only then they can go into the west i mean there is a criteria for going there and these are the people if they would have been over here they would have brought this country to the excellence so this is one problem probably as an individual i can handle it only if my spirituality is very high which means doing on a personal you know training and teaching and grooming myself that's only handle you know handleable on a personal level but it this problem has to be addressed at the leadership level
they should seriously crea create <coughs> institutions and, and, and I just I'm, I'm, I would like to just share a good news that there are certain institutions in Pakistan now especially uh, since we are doctors like PKLI is one institution in uh, there is a place which is called Gumbert and seeing is believing you go there and see probably this is one of the busiest liver transplant unit in the whole world I'm saying whole world sure. because they are doing five liver transplants in a week <laughs> unbelievable the workload similarly there are other institutions I'm sure apart from the medical uh, field there may be other institutions so it is started but it is again in a snail's speed it has to it has to actually speed up the second part of it is that guilt part I think what uh, those brothers and sisters can do they can still they are doing a lot of work just sending money and thickening our ex, you know foreign exchange, yeah, foreign exchange uh, remittances. Uh, remittances and, and our uh, treasure here this is a great thing they are doing but this is just a very minor contribution <laughs> the main contribution they can do is that they can transfer the technology I will just request them and suggest them that whatever expertise and specialities you have please spare few months of your uh, year and just start making small institutions there are many people which which are ready to partner it with you mm -hmm. and you can just start the business people can start their businesses over here the technical expert people like you you can come here and just do some services over there and I'm very happy to share with you and you already know it and you are into it that there are many Pakistanis who are actually doing it mm -hmm. we have a friend Riaz uh, he comes from whole UK every year and he sets up his plastic clinic in Gujarat he sets up a plastic surgery clinic and he does heaps and heaps of surgeries for the people and similarly I mean you are one who just comes here at different part of cities and you do you know expertise are related to the, the, the musculoskeletal problems and there are many people who are doing it mm -hmm. so if you can come back uh, please don't be emotional just work it out statistically and see you may just put your children in trouble if you come over here unless and until you don't make a very good homework because it will be injustice with those children yeah. you grow them in that environment and suddenly you come and work in those uh, circumstances with which you know their personality and their individuality does not match so I will just be very realistic and say don't be very emotional but still bring your children over here and bring your expertise over here and uh, start contributing it. No, that's, that's very good ideas about how we can reverse the brain drain. Yes. But the issue which we are interested in, especially in this talk, is about yeah, our young generation that is now young and assimilated in American system or European system. And for them, so what do you think parents should be doing that they connect those children? I mean, apart from just moving here, I mean, technically, technology transfer, services, all those things are very good. But the children, they are kind of disconnected and they mm -hmm. feel disconnected. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the tips we can do for our well, children? Well, for the, see, the children which are younger than seven years of age, they can be molded the way you want it by changing the environment around them, right? But the children who are grown up and in Pakistan, we can say 10 years of age. But in West, we will say seven years of age because their growth yes. is m much more mm -hmm. rapid. They become, they, d they, they, they had that adulthood in their head much earlier as compared to children over here. So for them, if someone is grown up, then it is very, very difficult. We know as a parenting, uh, pr you know, knowing the pr parenting principles, it's very difficult to change them to mold their thought pattern. However, there are one tool which is the most important tool to just keep them in that discipline which you are mentioning and the name of that tool is relation mm -hmm. if we don't lose our relation with our children and, and the indicate indicator for good relation is if your children wants to spend time with you mm -hmm. and they are always asking baba mama please spare some time i really enjoy when i sit with you my, the, the, my time is a quality time when, when I am with you. This is one yardstick. And the second yardstick is that all those things which you don't like, they are very happy and willing to share even those things to you which you think are wrong and, they, and you don't like them. That's right. If these two things, if your relation is of that level, then 
I think we are in a position to, I won't say change them, I would say we are in a position to mentor them. We are in a position to guide them. Every human being is independent entity and as an independent person and he has got a right to decide about our life. But our Eastern way of grooming our children is that our children are not their biological parents al alone. They are their teachers and above all they are their mentors. So what I will suggest will be one thing which I have noted whenever I went to either UK or in Australia also and USA that all the parents who have got this problem, they have got relationship problem. Their, their, their children are actually disconnected, they don't feel comfortable and the own, one advice which I will give to the parents of, of those parents whose children are grown up the advice will be that please don't advise them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Advising That's right. a child, an adult child, is one of the most counterproductive thing. That's so true. I will just say that you just develop a connection. Mm -hmm. And if you, for example, if you want them to read books, then don't tell them to read books. Just read books in front of them. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, that's that's very important. That their role model should be their parents, and uh, I think there are many other simple ways also. Yes, like please. you know, you can show the the good aspects of Pakistan yes. or your whatever country you belong. And to. And there are many actually. Yeah. And they're very. And yes. there are like beautiful areas. Yes. You can bring them for tourism. Yes. Uh, they can have. Um, I, I was thinking to to kind of propagate this idea that why don't we do marriage in Pakistan and zoom it for the rest of the world. Yes, yes. Isn't that uh, a way <laughs> to kind of, you know, the, you know in idea. one marriage. I think I'll do it in one of my <laughs> YouTube vlogs. I will do that. <laughs> so, uh, you see, in one marriage, they spend like 150 to 200 thousand dollars. I mean, think about this, that if they get this marriage in a scenic area in, uh, in GBS, right. And then zoom it for the. I mean, the pandemic has taught us how to zoom and <laughs> have a virtual marriage all over the world. <laughs> yes. So there, there are so many things. I think we can get connected. And you're right. The relation with the children yes, right. is. I mean, this is this was actually the talk was so uh, kind of focused and it was so serious talk that we uh, actually forgot to uh, really. I forgot to really share all those lighter parts of it which you have mentioned. See, there are so many historical places, you know. I went to Edinburgh mm -hmm. and then there is, th th there is a place called Royal Mile. And in that Royal Mile, there are eight, eight, nine type of monuments. And each monument, they just charge you 50, 50 pound, 30 pound, 20 pound. And they are just very simple things. They are not very, very historical. They are not very, very, you know, kind of very attractive. They, they, they have got some value. But if you just move 100 kilometers from here from Bahawalpur, there's a Dravar fort. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing in the whole world like Dravar fort. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. And if that is developed and if you bring your children, my, my Khalazad bhai, my cousin came from Canada. And only reason for coming over here, only two reasons was meeting me and also to see Dravar fort. And when he went there, he said, I'm so happy that I could see it because I only saw it in the books. So this is just one, you go to Uch, there are so many historical monuments. Yeah. In Bahawalpur, there are five forts, you know, five type of, you know, kind of palaces, which I can bet that mm -hmm. there is no palace in the world is comparable to that in the aspect which, you know, in which they were built. Similarly, our northern areas, I mean, yeah. you have been to Europe Full and of countries. Beauty. Oh, this is unbelievable. Yeah. The mountains which are there in the northern areas, they are not mountains. You have to develop some other vocabulary for that. They are something else. Something else. <laughs> right? Yeah. With mountains, we think that there is a heap of mud and a stone there and grass over there. But they are beyond that. Yeah. There is something extra to that. And, and not only that, the mountains, the people living in the and mountains. People, oh, they are Simple lovely. people. They are lovely. So, so, so many things we can show. And when our children come and because of the infrastructure, like, you know, the road is bumpy and uh, we don't develop, we haven't developed things, infrastructure Sorry to interrupt there. you. This is also a very good news that now almost all Pakistan is connected yeah. with a motorway. Yeah. If you start from Karachi, only there is one patch on which work has been started that is from Hyderabad to Sakkar. Otherwise, you may not apply a break yeah. if you start from that Karachi and you land either on Sawat or on Peshawar or on Aftabad. Or even now to Gwadar. 
to Gawadar as well. Yeah. Okay, we forget this part of Pakistan. Gawadar is actually the western border of Pakistan, in, in, uh, southwestern border of the Pakistan. And this is one of the beautiful beaches you can imagine. It's yeah. a clean beach. Yeah. And uh, the other beauty is <coughs> that that beach is very deep as well. So this is why ships, you know, this is why this is very attractive mm -hmm. place for all the world for transit from Pakistan to the Central Asian states because ships can come and just can uh, kind of a dock just at the edge of the earth. As so, a matter of fact, one of my friend is planning to start a cruise from Karachi to Gawadar lovely, just for recreation. Lovely, so lovely. I think uh, not just Pakistan, I mean all over the Muslim world, so many things are there. We can connect our children to those beautiful areas. We can bring them there. And if they have a question about some infrastructure problem, some electricity problem, we can tell them, look, the reason of these problems are we <laughs> who have moved from this country. Had we been there so that we involve our children, the effects of brain drain on the poverty stricken and victim all over the world, especially the Muslim world. Uh, if you have any questions, please you can send the feedback and we can talk about these things. I think we should bring dialogue with our children about True. this brain drain. True. It is not the privilege now they have got that they are living in comfortable environment. It is that there is some price for it mm. and they should at least know that cost and price our nations are paying for this brain drain. And sir, I mean sorry for interrupting you, probably you were doing, making the concluding remarks. The other thing is that we must not tell a lie to our children. With that, rela this relationship has to be a relationship of trust and truth. Yeah. If they say this happens in Pakistan or, or, or India or I mean if your children they ask from you and if it is true, just tell them this, yes this is true yeah. and this is the reason of it. Yeah. Right? This is the reason. So there is no, 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 no problem you know, in telling them the truth and I am sure the children who are grown up in that environment, they, they have got the intellect and the kind of uh, understanding that, that they will be easily convinced and they will be logically understanding it that if we are such, why we are such. So thank you, Javed, thank you very much. for giving us time. Thank you. Thank you, very you much. know, it's from your pleasure. busy schedule. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Take care.